Nightmares in my head, I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature Hello everybody, welcome back to Pyrography for Beginners and Beyond And this is going to be part two of this sinister lady's nose uh, I said I would continue on with the nose so I've left it alone and I've been doing some shading on other areas of this face I've switched over now to my large flat round shader and we'll continue on trying to pop this nose off the face so I'd left the bridges of the nose where we left off in the last video so I could show you what uh, I do personally to try and pop these noses forward so now I will, as it, because this is a, a sinister looking woman she's very dark skinned so I will be darkening up quite a bit more now and really starting to pop this bridge of the nose out hopefully you can see fine on the camera do need to sort out this uh, studio desk badly tidy up I'm a scruff so we got to this stage didn't we yesterday where we start the shading up you know the sides and the nostrils of this nose but that was that was just the tip of the iceberg so to speak Now we want to really get the definition going. And do you remember me saying yesterday about the arrows in these corners where the nostrils that sort of meet up with the nose, they can be darkened off. We may need to turn the heat down on this pen a little if you have your pen heat too high when you're doing this sort of work you can quickly snowball the effect totally wrong you know all your shading can quickly get out of control and you will lose all the good work you've done so we'll see if this heat needs turning down because I'm currently sat at just over four on this large round shader. Which is usually a little high for what I work on but as this lady was so dark faced and sinister I'd been working on a higher heat. But I will need to turn it down to capture that bridge and at this stage we can begin to expand out more into the front of the face because remember we're pushing everything back and keeping this nose sitting I am proud. So I'll now start just gently shading away at these areas on the cheeks. Just so I can build that other like sort of visual point in my mind of the shades I want 
to get to. Same down this side. Remember this is the side where my light is coming in. This side is going to be a little bit darker. This is also an area of the nose up here. Right near up, up, up near your eyes. That is also an area that we need to consider. This side certainly needs sinking in more yet to get that deeper recess. Try and pop this side up. Just moving my pen steadily and quickly on a slight angle, just pushing this skin back and keeping this area raised. Up here right in the corner of the eyes will be much darker as that is one of the most sunken in areas of our face so as we build out all this skin tone around the cheeks it helps us <laughs> to start seeing this nose protrude more and more so everything all plays a part in uh, building the picture you know we couldn't just solely focus just on the nose itself we need to build it up around it as well so we can truly capture those tones and that said she's got big flaring nostrils so right here there'll be a shadowing where it goes up her nose So you will tend to find you will always have some shadowing right where the nostrils are. The tip of the nose I always find quite a, a challenge. This is the bit where right at the very end of the nose, let me see if I can get you up on camera. There is a, a sweet spot where it is darker as it folds away, you know, up to the top lip area. There's an underneath, isn't there? This nose is sticking out. Generally, there will be a shadow. See if we can capture this shadow. So this has all been done just from my mind. So you'll have to forgive me if uh, this doesn't go down well. I'm not using a reference picture for this. to soften the 
these edges up. When we're trying to show that curvature, I'm going to turn my pen down a little to three and a half. When we're trying to show like there's the edge and it's coming up round, we don't want to be on a really high heat setting. Otherwise we'll lose the shape. I have been known in the past to spend many, many hours on noses trying to perfect them by layering heat over and over until I can capture that perfect blend. A side break you see I'll just put that solid line in you may not be able to see it very well but that immediately has given that nose some lift just by putting that one line in there I'll do the same down this side And then the further away to the bottom of the bridge, it will be darker. This reminds me of the wrinkly, wrinkly old lady I did that I found and I really enjoyed doing the wrinkly old lady in the end. Yeah. Hopefully I'll get as much enjoyment out of this sinister nun. So now I'm looking to build up a higher point of the nose of a rather ugly nose, may I add, she's got. Let's see if we can just... These points here where the nostrils are, you want to sort of try and blend out ever so gently, just building up slowly to get that nice smooth like sort of flow, you know, so it flows down and across and down and off to the face. That's so why working at high heats for me personally on faces does not work <laughs> excuse me one moment again i don't know what pollen season it is but you know it's doing my editing These movements are trying to go 
in the direction of the shape that we're trying to build it's no good me shading straight across here i want to shade up on the angle because here's a little area where that what i like to refer to as the arrow is right in that gap there and then we'll try to wear this a gently smooth off I'm not rushing this process, I'm just very gently just layering up, searching for that tone. A lot of people can make the mistake on noses and rush them on too high a heat. And that's when you start to really lose your shape. It's got to be a very gradual process. As we build from the bottom, where it's going to be darker, and lighten up more and more as we get higher up to that, you know, the highest point. That side's gonna be a little bit tricky for the right hander. Don't like the way the shape's that bit's gone. Now, see this bit, I'm absolutely fine with the right hander to get in at. This bit, I'm absolutely fine. This bit, I'm cack handed. I'm coming at it from the wrong side. I can smooth out this nostril, but I can't work down this wall because I want to be on this side to work that wall like I am on this side, you know, coming from the bottom upwards so that's where I would flip my board over which I may need to cut this piece of board again it's a probably well it's two a just over two a fours side by side I know that doesn't mean a lot to uh, our American friends who don't use a four and stuff they use it in inches don't don't they uh, I think it's inches that they measure off but we use A4 as size guides A3, A5, A2, A1 I'm hoping for a sunny day today, but it's cloudy this morning. The, the sunshine has deserted us in the UK. We had a glorious week last week. Now you see here, as I've got my wrinkles going across the nose, down here is very much 
parts of the side bridges coming up so this is still a part of the nose the wrinkles I may touch on at a further point if anybody is interested in learning more about wrinkles do several crafts and this studio badly needs tidying up so I want to really start building that definition in now and then as you start as you have started making that nose step up start working your way out more into the face to blend out that skin tone remember everything has to go back pretty much bar the nose to give that pop as we like to call it will probably have to pause this video and cut this board down so I can swing it around because I'm not going to be able to show you the true uh, scale of what I would do with the board being so big at the moment I'm going to need to cut it down to its regular size so I can swing it around But let's get this shadow that this nose would cast. And just leave a slight gap. Remember our light's coming in from this way. So this shadow will be less than what it is on this side. This shading will be heavier because our light is coming in that way. So if you remember in the last lesson where I did say to you, it's quite important early on to think about where your light is coming from. That is one of the reasons why ever so gently just inching up the step
even putting less pressure down with my pen so I reduce the heat that I'm applying into the wood so I don't get too heavy We are starting Captain America today, this afternoon, and I want to start us off with a discussion about blending, as blending is a very key component of pyrography art, of any art form, blending is one of the secrets to a successful piece of art and one that doesn't quite look right and so we will be discussing in more detail blending for anybody who is unfamiliar with the term don't know how long we're going to go on this video. I'm going to go till 7am, so half an hour. Let's see what sort of point we've got to in another half an hour's time. I do apologise for the length of the lessons, but because I don't time lapse uh, my tutorials, it's all done in real time. And I, for me, I just feel you get a better sense of what it is I'm trying to achieve rather than my pen speeding along at a hundred miles an hour and me just giving some quick voice over which doesn't help anybody in the slightest the only downside to doing it live like this is if I make a cock up then I make an idiot of myself but it won't be the first time and it won't be the last. <laughs> and we're all learning. I'm I'm no different than anybody else. I'm no better than anybody else at pyrography. We're all learning. And my slogan every hour of burning is an hour of learning and it truly is <laughs> 
so we've still got a way to go till we hit the very top of this nose just dabbing around just trying to make things as smooth as they would be on the nose feel this nostril wants to come up a little higher to try and balance out with that side Don't forget this side is coming up. So we start at the bottom and go upwards and inwards and then we're building the darkness from the right area. Where if I started up here and worked my way down, I would get my darker spot higher up, which would then be coming from the incorrect side. Down here, unless you've got a crooked nose, is usually you can get away with like a straight line to define that side wall of the bridge, and then we'll blend off from this side wall. Remember, it at the bottom, so on the outer side of this bridge would be its darkest point because that is the lowest point so we go ever so gently and carefully making sure we get that tones on the right side of things This side up here, up right in the corner of the eye, you wouldn't really see so much. So it will be getting darkened off, but that's going to be later on in the piece as everything starts to come together. You're not really going to see more of the light smoothing off up here. It's going to be blinded away a bit on the angle. Concentrate and trying to get this side stepped up. this is still down the side it's nothing to do with the top 
part of the nose at the moment we're still working down that side wall next to the cheek we have to be mindful that we don't put too hard a line in because the face you know it's gradually you know moves along doesn't it flows so if we go with too hard a line down there we can lose our flow all the while we're adding more and more to the skin everything as we adjust one thing everything else has to then adjust on more and more and so on and so forth so it's a, it is a building process gently dab just a tiny bit of heat in there just to take that hard edge off there which I will work more where I'm going to ever so gently go in that area fold will be darker and you will see in a minute how adding that those extra little areas of darkness really begin to make the nose stand out more Well, they do in my mind's eye anyway I can see them uh, beginning to form this side because I can't get at it I can't shape like I can this side at the moment so this video will be getting paused while I chop this board down so we can swing it about a bit more shadowing again here from the main nose There's always going to be that shadow that helps to give that pop off the board. I would suggest you don't go too wide to begin with. Get a feel, get a look to see how far you want to take that shade in. As to, you know, how far you want to make this nose stick forward a good human portrait not saying this is going to be a good human portrait by any means 
but a good human portrait may take me at least a week at the minute that's working you know pretty much solidly I, every day until I burn myself out when you feel yourself to the point where you know you're getting a bit sick of what you're doing and you're like Phew, I can't be bothered anymore stop at that point stop take a break come back to it with fresh eyes you can literally burn yourself out with pyrography and then you will undo all the work you've done simply because you've lost interest because you've been going at it for so long I'm quite lucky in some ways I'm blessed with uh, pretty high patience I wouldn't say a high patience threshold because there is no such thing as a but I've got a lot of patience so I can sit for many hours just what will look to be doing nothing but will be very gently just shading more and more not so what not so much interested in instant gratification i've gone beyond that now i've learned that that is not the way forward with trying to produce you know eye-catching art it's not about instant gratification it's about that end product so if it I did a horse tutorial, uh, which you will see a little while back. And believe it or not, that horse was done over uh, maybe a three or four month period. <laughs> it broke my spirit a few times. I was working it and working it, trying to get this depth of this horse. And it just kept breaking me. And so I had to put it away for weeks on end. Then one day I would think, oh, I'll have another go at the horse. Spend a couple of hours, it would break me again. And so on and so forth. So that tutorial actually was done over many months. For some it will come more natural than others. You know, those that are studied art i have never studied art at college i've never done any art until i said five years ago when i picked up a pyrography pen that was my introduction i have got a bit of an i suppose an addictive nature so when i do get into something i generally absorb myself into it quite deeply now I'm going to start building out some of the skin around the flaps of these nostrils because I've got my heat setting now at under four three and just over three and a half I can move my pen quite quickly and just add that gentle golden glow to the wood
don't forget down here you can add creases as deeply as you want coming from the nostrils or completely up to your own imagination you can make really deep ruts or you could have none whatsoever that's the beauty of art <laughs> start taking out some of this hard line here you may not be able to see it it's clearly there's a hard line running down there I want to start to take that out a little start to soften it up get as close to it as I can And if I get bored in an area, I'll jump off to another part, which is still part of the nose up here. <laughs> These wrinkles will look a bit different. <laughs> I may even wrinkle further across from these little lines here. We'll see how I feel. That's a bit down the road, yeah. I've just got to not get myself addicted to doing this piece and forget about Captain America. <laughs> I got a bit carried away with a parrot. Spent longer on it than I should have done. And now I'm playing catch up with myself. I've got till the 7th of July to get Captain America done, which is plenty of time. <laughs> This video is mainly a follow on for our dear friend Judy. Who wants to learn more about human noses. She's a very good pyrographer already. An extremely good pyrographer. But she's very keen to improve her skills. So I did this video continuation, especially for Judy. So we do have a wonderful Facebook group of such kind, loving, helpful people. I very much missed being in the group while I was ill. I'm so glad and grateful to be back amongst them all because they are such beautiful people, so friendly and kind and helpful to new pyrographers. We're called Pyrography for Beginners and Beyond by Flames Pyro Art. If you want to check us out on Facebook, answer a few simple questions, you know, just a general accepting the rules what we 
will and won't allow. Uh, we are a private group, otherwise you do get your idiot saying, would you like to earn a secondary income? If so, click here and you could earn up to £200 a day and it's all these scam things and you can get bombarded with them. So it's always best to keep your groups private. I have a few questions they have to answer before they come in the group. And then we accept we accept you pretty quick. Once you put a request in, usually within minutes or so, somebody, either myself, John, Sally or Karen, will be on the case pretty quick. Check everything's above board with your answers and accept you into the group and you will find a wealth of fantastic pyrographers of all levels we have total beginners right up to amazing pyrographers Karen being one of them who is one of the admins of the group but she's having a little lull at the minute is Karen I think she'd uh, lost a bit of a creative spark like we all do and we've got Sally who is another phenomenal pyrographer absolutely amazing and John I haven't seen much of John's work for a little while but I will keen to see how John's getting on lovely man absolutely lovely man he's been with me right from the very start as John he carried a lot of the weight while I was gone I'm so very grateful to John but it's your group it's our group it's not my group it belongs to us all We're just a group of kindred spirits who all love pyrography art can get together and chat and people can ask questions of those who may be a little more experienced than themselves and they're more than happy to answer your questions. We run monthly competitions for the pyrographer of the month with three different classifications beginners intermediate and advanced where you are voted by the group as to the favorite piece of each month with a different theme and then a certificate will be sent out to you and you're an award winning pyrographer. We don't charge you any money for that. I just think it's a nice touch to for you to receive an accolade. For your efforts where you can pin up poor frame next to your pyrography station to show off to your friends that you're an award winner Now I am nearing the point now on this nose where I want to start changing my angle. You know I've been working upwards, I want to start now bridging across. And my angle will now begin to change. 
otherwise I'd carry on if, if I carried on on the angle I was on the darkness you would have a very thin like knife point nose which obviously noses aren't like that so the angle must change I'm going to try and get the shape of this cacanders because it's throwing me off. Generally, you will have a little tip of shading there but do this very softly and gradually as if you it's barely even turning the shade of the wood but as I build and build away I promise you over time it is just adding that golden glow And this is what we call layering. Again here, because of the offside, you're not going to see much of that step. Just going to see a hard line, aren't you? If the angle's coming in from this way, tell me, got four minutes left, and we'll cut this video. come back for part three once I've chopped the board down because I do want to touch on these areas with you Again, you see at the moment my shading is wrong. This side is darker than this. And where the, li where the light is coming from, this side should be darker.
right here. I'm just adding a little bit more thicker darkness to try and add that bit more pop on the outside, not working inside the nostril and just ever so slightly outside it to try and give that lift. I don't know if any of you have ever done a Dobby portrait. Dobby's got a big nose with a massive shadow coming off it. Done a few uh, weird Dobbies. And he has a big shadow. Burns like this one are for entertainment purposes only unless you lay down a transfer and then you do not copy a reference picture and you fill in from your own mind then you're not plagiarizing anything all you've done basically is you've lined up your eyes your nose your mouth the definite you know the shapes of a face and then you are filling in completely from your own imagination. You're not looking at a reference picture. To me then, that is an original piece of art. If somebody sent you, say, a portrait of mum, dad, brother, sister, dog, cat, baby, and you had to follow it to the letter. And then that's a different kettle of fish because you are copying exactly as per the image. But the way I like to work, I just get my uh, proportions in and then I go my own way. suggest in time you try and do the same yourself yourselves <laughs> work from your own imagination I find it more challenging to work from a reference picture I find it much more <laughs> restrictive when I have to copy a reference picture exactly to the letter I much prefer you know to go creative free handing myself I know these creases at the moment look like lines but I will show you a little technique maybe later on how to uh, break those creases up it's not a difficult thing to do okay we've got hit seven o'clock I've been going for longer probably than what I should have done again I'm so sorry but I just get carried away and fall in love with what I'm doing and I could just sit there and talk to you for hours and just work away but I know I'd make you all fall asleep so I'm going to cut the board down and then I'll be able to spin this board around a lot more and really get into the final shaping of this nose and branch out a little further okay so have a great day everybody happy pyroing i hope the sun is shining where you are sending lots of love 
from the northwest of England to everybody out in the world who may be watching this video. I appreciate you all very much and if there is anything at all I can help you with in any way please leave me a comment and I will get back to you with a question to the with an answer to the question to the best of my ability. Okay, take care for now.